All right, welcome to WebEx. Uh, this is a presentation about how to get started with WebEx, which is a distance learning platform and a meeting platform. So today, we're gonna go through some basic startup things to get started. And today, I am assisted by our my very favorite computer science teacher, Mr. Mark Merlino. Look at him right there. Say hi, Mark. Hello. Hi, I was doing that. Hello. Yes. Hi, how's everybody? All right, you can't answer, so. No, but that's okay. <laughs> so today, we I'm gonna push him off the screen for now, but what's important is you'll notice that Mark is wearing uh, a set of headphones and a mic, um, very similar to most mics you can buy anywhere else. Uh, I've got a mic that's a little more of a standalone type right here, um, but you'll notice that you can probably hear us both just fine. So. It, as we get started with this, when you start thinking about what you're going to do to teach your students um, what you need to um, what you need to purchase, that's not one of the things you should be super concerned about. So I'll move him over and then we will start with this presentation. All right, so welcome to WebEx. Today we're going to do some alliteration because I like it. So we're gonna do planning, preferences, and pointers. You can't see Mark, but he's he's making faces because I'm dumb and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so today, uh, so one of the first things we want to talk about is why we're using WebEx. Uh, we're using WebEx because it's approved for, or approved and paid for by SCPS. So immediately for SCPS teachers, that that's going to be a huge bonus. Um, it's also not free, which you would think would be a problem, but in reality, the entire world right now under the COVID nineteen virus is going to have the problem that everybody needs to telecommute into work. So we're hoping that if all of the free services get swamped, WebEx will be a little more reliable. Mark and I have been experimenting with a bunch of different things uh, remotely over the past couple days. So what, actually, right now he's on a call, so he's at his house, you can see his cat in the background. Um, kitty, not now. <laughs> not now, kitty. Um, so he and I have been trying to work out to see what we think would be best between this and Google Meetings. Um, and we've decided that one of the reasons WebEx is good is because you can set it up once and you're going to be good for the rest of the quarter. So, uh, and we'll talk about how that works later. Um, it's also nice because it functions as a web chat and a video recording software. It has its own proprietary video recording format that can only really be viewed in WebEx. Uh, we haven't found a good way to export it out, so it's not fantastic for recordings, but it's great for holding video and web chat so that students can actually see you and you can connect with them even though you're not in the building in the room with them and it does work for students without cameras uh, and microphones and it actually works without any downloaded software they can run everything in a browser so as you're getting ready to do this you might have never thought you are going to do any sort of virtual teaching before and you may have been able to get through your entire career that way but it doesn't look like that's going to happen anymore um, with this new world we're in, we need to make sure that we all are proficient with basic video teaching tools. Um, and this presentation is hopefully going to help you get up to speed on that with minimal struggles. So when you're planning your content, make a plan. It'll really help you feel more, com more comfortable. I'm using um, Google Slides to sort of keep everything in order so that I know what we're going to do next. And we just follow these slides and I sort of keep that going. If you can keep a reminder of your content on the screen, it can really help students as they search through a video later for review. I'm actually recording this with another software called OBS. Um, so as we do this, I'm recording it so I can upload it to YouTube. Um, I've got another video on that that can show you how to set up a YouTube channel um, that I will talk about for like five seconds at the end if you're interested. So let's go to the next thing. Okay, so setting up your Cisco WebEx account. So I'm going to shrink that. Right now I am sharing through WebEx, um, but you're going to go to your Clever account, type WebEx, WebEx meetings. Uh, when you click on that, it's going to take you to the enterprise site and you're going to put in, you're going to sign in using your SCPS email. I have two because I'm old um, at <laughs> myscps.us. It's the myscps US that worked for me. Uh, and when you sign in that way, it's going to have the ability to set up your settings. You're probably going to have to download an app. Uh, you're going to want to do that and install it. Hopefully you'll have the rights to do that. When you get in there, you can change your picture and all this other stuff just so your kids know it's you. Um, 
All right, cool. So once that's set up, you will have the app, all right? And the app starts out with a little window that kind of looks like this. And in that, you're going to see your host URL. For everyone we've done so far, it's https colon forward slash forward slash, just like normal, scps.webex.com forward slash meet, and then it's forward slash your user ID. So mine's Don and CN. This might be hard to see here, but that's what it's going to be. And then what will happen is your students can literally click on the website, uh, click on that link and go and open it in their window. So I've got an extra computer that's getting ready to join. So when it joins in, I'm going to show what that looks like. So oh, cat. can you hear that? Is it super loud? Yeah, well, no, I don't hear it. It's, it's this guy who oh, oh okay. <laughs> he keeps jumping up. Been fine leaving me alone all day and now the one time we're recording he's like oh, i want to be a part of it all right so i'm going to minimize my uh presentation here maybe okay move it over and then i'm going to show the webex client so if i um currently it's it's going to hide all this stuff for the client but i do want to show you uh what it looks like so on my end um You've, I've got this little screen down here with whoever's talking the most. Um, there are different options, and you can see over here, you can set it. So I've got Mark in this window, and I'm going to maximize this so you can see it. Um, I've got Mark in one window, and then my student test over here. That's one setup, and you've got another setup by doing this one. So this has Mark because he's talked the most because he's our little chatty Cathy. But if we have sure. our our student test... Great. Can you say something? That's my student tester. He's now talking, so it puts his camera up. Now, he doesn't have a camera running, so you're not going to see any picture. You'll just hit to see their initials, but they can see you. So what's important is right now, Mark, Mark's screen looks like this. So Mark is, I'm going to minimize this. Okay, so Mark's screen is seeing this. So he sees the, the video of me and he can see my desktop. Now, if I change it from, if I stop sharing my screen here, you can see, I gotta bring his window back to the top. This is what Mark is seeing now. So his screen is a big close up of my face, which is totally unnecessary. And it also has chat. Um, so I'll move that out of the way. And with the chat, you can chat by clicking here and you can see that Mark has privately messaged me nice, and I can also chat back with him from nice. I can go to each one, or I can actually select to everyone and say hello. And when I do that, he gets a message back on his screen that says hello. Back to our meetings. So with our meeting setup, you can see here that we've got different tools down here at the bottom. Um, I can mute my audio. So yeah, now can't hear him. Mark can't hear me at all. Can't hear him talking at all. Right. And that's really valuable because if you're going to have office hours, you're going to want to leave your mute on and you want to going to turn your microphone off or your, your screen off. So now this is what Mark sees. Nothing. He hears nothing and sees nothing. But that's great because what that does is that allows me to go on with my life until someone else joins the call. And when they do, I can unmute that and unmute my audio and it'll take a second back. and I'm back. So there. So during that time, he could hear nothing. So I can go on about my life. I can help my kids with their homework. I can do whatever. And, and when uh, someone jumps into the chat room because they need help, it'll do that, that noise that the other account made when it came in. So I'll be able to hear someone needs help, come over here and help them. I couldn't see anything and I couldn't hear anything because he turned off his mic and he turned off his camera. Perfect. And that's one thing you want to sort of keep aware of, of your surroundings and what you got on because you obviously don't want to just stream that the whole time during your office hours when you're doing whatever you're doing around your house. Cool. Let's go back to our little presentation here. Um, so there's a couple preferences we really feel that um, every teacher needs to set up. This will probably be the most important screen that you need to remember and you can't see it because I have not shared it. 
I was like, All right, that, I know you said you're recording yourself too, so I'm like, I'm sure you have it on that end, but it did. I, it up, I, I didn't did. say anything. I, so, oh, okay. All right, so screen. I mean, I did. I was, okay, so share. I'm going to share. I have two monitors, so I've got. So now I'm sharing. So now Mark can see what I'm looking it's, at. Yes, now I'm looking at what we're talking about instead of just looking at my Donald's face. face <laughs> in my 27 inch monitor. <laughs> That's terrifying. Okay, so so we're gonna set up audio notifications. Um, that's so that you want to make sure that when someone joins in the chat, you hear it. So in your own WebEx chat or your own WebEx system, you're going to go to your preferences and file notifications, edit preferences, participants tab, um, joins meeting. So you want to make sure it plays a sound when someone joins the meeting. That way you know someone is joining your meeting, so you can go help them. And I also like it to have it when uh, someone raises their hand, if um, what that does. So Mark's going to press the raise hand button. I sure was. I knew he was. <laughs> now, <laughs> we, you can turn that off if you've got kids who just constantly spam that and really make you annoyed. So that's an option. Once you know where it is, you'll be good. And then finally, you definitely need to assign and remove some student privileges. So it's really called assigning student privileges. So on the file menu under participants, you're going to uncheck anyone can share because otherwise your your student can just literally take over your screen and show whatever they want to everyone. As you can imagine, that's probably not a good idea, at least in high school uh, or middle school. So, any school. Any school. Yeah, it's probably just a bad idea in general. Um, so there's that. <laughs> and then the other thing you want to do is make sure that you um, – under the document column, you uncheck the annotate box because um, before they can annotate the screen. So can you, Mark, go ahead and do that. So, so I have these tools here. So if I want to annotate, I can literally take, let's say I want to say uh, annotate something like, oh, I want to make sure that everybody sees this, this section here. There, right? And Mark is going to ask to annotate and it's going to say annotation request. I'm going to approve. And then it's going to say you and Mark can annotate. So then, therefore, you can say a kid can do it, but he can't just start drawing. Um, which, you know, if he's doing a smiley face, that's not great. But it could be way worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it could. Okay. So, all right. So we're going to stop share. No, we're going to keep going. So the next thing is I'm going to stop annotating this. And okay, some basic, some basic uh, distance teaching pointers. Um, when you're presenting content, remember to look into the camera rather than watch the screen. It's going to feel re really weird at first, but it's really going to make a connection to your student that they're not going to have otherwise. If you're constantly staring down at your screen, even if you're barely staring down at your screen, um, if you constantly look down here, it doesn't make the eye contact connection that, it, that, that will really get them to pay attention. And they're not going to pay attention to you as much as your content, but the more you can watch right here, the more they're going to connect with you. And that's what we need to try and get going uh, with this distance learning thing because it will really engage your students far more. Um, the next thing is uh, lighting. We want to make sure we, we avoid lights that are behind us or lights that are really bright and from the opposite direction. Um, on Amazon, I bought a simple ring light and it's really great because what it does is it causes a nice soft shadow all the way across everything we're looking for. Um, I think that was 15 bucks uh, and it was, it's been great. I understand not everybody's going to have that or want to do that and that's okay. Um, if you've got a light that you can put in front of you so it casts a light sort of from the front and it's not too harsh and causes really, really dark shadows, that's what you want to go for. When you stop presenting, make sure you mute your mic and stop your video. Um, that's pretty obvious. And then finally, be aware of your surroundings. Obviously, we're all teaching from home. Most of us have small children at home, like I do, who are or now making pets. a lot of noise or small <laughs> pets. I think our kids are going to understand that and that's going to be okay. Um, but in general, we're going to try and want to minimize that sort of stuff if possible. But once again, I think everybody's aware of what sort of situation we're in and we're all doing the best with what we can. Um, by using this sort of video chat system, if you have a camera, that's great. Uh, it really will help your students connect with you and that will really help them focus on your content maybe a little bit more. And I know for elementary school, 
it's just going to be more important to get that connection going. That's it. That should get you up and started with WebEx. Uh, it's actually a really great tool. Mark, do you have anything uh, you want to add? Just if you, when you're going through it and you might get frustrated with like uh, some of the setting things up, some things might be set to default settings that you're not aware of. You just have to try to click around, find the find your settings for your audio, and there should be sections for your camera and your like microphone if you have it and just go through those and make sure you have the right things selected and then that should kind of ease any of like the initial startup problems because that was one thing i have a lot of different devices and it would just connect to different things and it took me a minute to find which ones it was connected to and then i had to make sure it was just connected to one thing being the headset with the speakers and the microphone and then once that fell into place, everything else just ca kind of kept going. Right. It really, you can't break it. Um, no. So don't worry too much about experimenting because that's that's how you're going to learn. That's really the best way you can learn. Uh, with that said, uh, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, that's youtube.com slash Clayton Don. And the reason I'm saying that is because I do have a whole video that teaches you how to set your own YouTube channel up. Because I teach 3D modeling through YouTube at Crooms. We used to do it in class. They used to, the direct instruction was done that way. And then I could help students individually. So there's a video on how to set that up. So if you're interested in setting up a YouTube channel, that's a great way to get started. If you're not, then don't go there. It's all 3D like, modeling and stuff. Subscribe anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. And um, on behalf of me and Mark, thanks a lot. Uh, we will see you on the interwebs.